Welcome to another Nerd Entrepreneurs video where we interview young entrepreneurs and share insights into their mindsets, tactics, and tools to inspire you to get on your own entrepreneurial journey. This is the full-length interview with Johannes Weiss, co-founder at Conode, a Swiss software as a service startup based in Zurich. In this interview, Johannes Weiss shares his story of how he went from idea to building a team to launching a product that is live today and why he thinks that everybody should build their own startup. Keep watching. So, Johannes, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Daniel. Hi, thanks how are you doing? Me. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to you about um, your startup and your experience uh, launching it. And um, I'm very curious to get you know your view on you know how to start a startup and um, how do you how do you tackle that challenge that seems unsurmountable for some people. I wanted to start uh, the interview with a short introduction um, of yourself. I know you are heading the Subber Group with mm -hmm. uh, Conode as the flagship product. And um, on your, your mission, it says that uh, you want to help people get stuff done with your productivity apps. Um, maybe you can tell us a bit more about who you are you know, how old are you? What did you study? A bit, some personal information about yourself. All right. Uh, yeah, my name is Johannes. Um, I came originally from Germany, but uh, came to Switzerland roughly 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, started studying banking and finance here in Zurich. And after that, I uh, did the Master in Business Innovation at the University of St. Gallen. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if I think of, of my whole journey, I was always uh, trying to get things done and um, I was engaged in a, a mountain bike club mm -hmm. back then yeah. and um, I was always trying to organize me fully digital yeah. and um, I never found a, a tool that really covered all the use cases mm -hmm. and um, going from through the university I tried a lot of stuff and finally, I got the courage to really do something for myself yeah. Um, to, yeah, to really start that off because um, I couldn't, couldn't find something that really fit my needs. Yeah. And um, that what motivated me in the end to, to start with Subba Group. Yeah. We're going to jump into more details of how you started this uh, in a minute. I just... Um, yeah, maybe you can tell us a bit more about Subber Group and what exactly you do and how you help people get uh, stuff done digitally. Mm -hmm. um, the idea basically is that we want to cover all the use cases, but not by providing all the features they need, but more by merging all the tools people are using on one interface. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, we, we're convinced that this helps people to be productive, to stay focused along their way when, when working and um, especially, yeah, to, to really streamline their whole app ecosystem. Yeah. So if I understand it correctly, this is, um, um, this is an application on, on desktop, on a laptop that you can use. And that basically connects with many of the tools that already exist and kind of creates a, a layer on top of that and makes it easy to use all those tools at the same time without switching. And that's how you gain productivity. That's correct. That correct. We, we will not replace all the established tools, but we will make it simpler to use those tools. Maybe, maybe right. think of how you work yourself, yeah. um, countless browser tabs open, yes. uh, looking for information all over the place. Yes. And then um, with Conode, you have one centralized platform where you can do all the stuff 
and also find all the information you need. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I signed up for the for the app, and uh, I'm really curious to to start using it a bit more intensely and see how this works out, because it is totally true as you say. I always have at least ten tabs open. I have <laughs> like a I have like a a tab that says start my day, and there I have all my start pages that I need for the different tools. So it starts this at the beginning of the day and. I'm overwhelmed with the many tools that I that I'm using. Yeah. So I'm really curious uh, to use that. I'm curious to hear your feedback, but maybe we can postpone that. Yes, after the yes, session. <laughs> yes. I will definitely give you feedback. So for this interview, um, we have uh, prepared kind of an interactive game, and the game is uh, there are different topics uh, to choose from, uh, and you can. Choose a topic, and for each topic, I have a set of questions for you mm -hmm. that uh, you can answer according to your experience. Mm -hmm. So, we have uh, the topic before the start. So, this is before you even started thinking about this. We have a topic about the start itself, the start of your experience, the entrepreneurship um, yeah, way. Mm -hmm. Then, a topic about the idea itself. What first steps did you take? Mm -hmm. How did you deal with uncertainty along the way? What about financing? Because right. it's, uh, this is a very tricky topic for many people. How do I pay my bills if I don't have a job? Or do I have a job and do this on the side? I'm a newbie. How do, you know, I'm not an expert in this maybe at the beginning. How do I gain all that knowledge? Mm -hmm. Why cannot somebody else solve that problem that knows it better than me? And how do you keep the motivation? Because it's not a one-year journey. Yeah. And so a couple of questions about that. Is there any topic that uh, caught your attention especially that we can look at? I think the, the motivation is one of the most important topics when starting a startup. All right. So the first question would be, how do you keep your motivation up even if you're struggling every day? So I know it's been a long journey for, for you, for Konode and for the Subra group. How do you keep going? And you know, yeah. I think the intrinsic motivation is really important that you really believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that you are convinced to make an impact with everything, everything you do or with your startup. And um, that really helps even if you're struggling along the way. Yeah. And um, yeah, for me, it, it really, I'm, I really enjoy working also together with my team. I mm -hmm. um, think that's also very important to have also very different characters in your yeah. team um, where you really motivate from all the uh, where you like all the, the team together they motivate them um, <laughs> they motivate each other yeah, yeah or... exactly they, they motivate each other yeah um, because everyone is looking into something from a different angle yeah and um, yeah that that also helps and to see okay even though I'm struggling right now, others yeah. are um, yeah. moving moving on. That's that really helps. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's that's in the end. Um, even though there are a lot of struggles along the way, yeah, you definitely have um, your good moments as well. And yeah, this it's a balance, I would say, and try to to celebrate yeah. the um, the good moments, especially. And um, try to kind kind of um, over how you overplay the, the struggles. Yeah. yeah. So in the end, it's it it is as you say a balance. You have the struggles, but you have the good moments. Exactly. How was it in the beginning? Did you have the same motivation in the beginning? Um, the same belief that that this would work or that this should exist then, or or did it change along? the time that you've been working on this? Has it become stronger or...? I think the, the 
more advanced the product becomes mm -hmm. um, the more real gets your vision mm -hmm. and, and therefore it's becoming more tangible mm -hmm. over the time but it's still the same motivation as before we really try to help people get their things done get organized mm -hmm. and um, we kind of uh, tried different solutions and we pivoted a little bit yeah. on, on the product so how do we cover all those use cases yeah that has changed over the time so yeah. so the journey to get to to the vision um, that changed yeah but uh, i still be believe in the same vision as before yeah, yeah. yeah. And what were the biggest struggles that uh, have kept you up at night or keep you up at night maybe now? Do you have any you know, concrete struggles that you remember? Or is it just so many that <laughs> you just <laughs> actively forget them? Currently, I would say the, the biggest struggle is finding the first paying customers. Yeah. We, reached out to a lot of people in the beginning it's friends but um, also to our uh, broader network yeah. you're going to, to events yeah. talking about Conode um, people like the tool they give you positive feedback but in the end um, they don't want to adapt it in their in their company because it's really advanced yeah. and um, there is also uncertainty what happens if we don't survive yes, in the next course. six months. So it's, I would say it's one of the most important struggles right now that we are facing yeah. um, to really convince the first company to, to roll Conode out in their yeah. offices yeah. and yeah, to even, even pay some, some small fees to, yeah. to use our tool. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can understand that. So you've been now running for a while or until now, actually, without a paying customer. Exactly. So how long has that, has that been? We founded the company one and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Before that, we um, got a business angel on board. Yeah. So he enabled us to okay. hire an external vendor to build the product. Yeah. And um, that really went well. So basically, that's why we have a first version yeah. already online. Yeah. Um, right now, we more or less don't have costs, monthly costs. Yeah. Some some Amazon web services yeah. Yeah. fees, yeah. Yeah. and um, that's it. It's a team that is based, or they get compensated with equity. Yeah. So um, we can run right now, even though. We don't have a lot of money yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's that's in the end something we need to change. Yeah. Because at some day you you need to kind of make a of make course a make a business case. Um, can we jump to the financing? I think this is a topic that's right around the corner. Um, how did you do it financially for yourself and the business? You've been working on this for over a year, and you've just talked about you know how how the team members are compensated for their work could you go a bit more concretely into you know how you manage this you know how you discuss this with your co-founders or your team members and how you would do this so you you're talking about the compensation yes, the salary exactly. and how we finance our lives yes yeah exactly um Nobody of us is working full time on the startup yeah. so far. So everyone has a, a job. In my case, it's a full time job as a consultant. Yeah. Um, yeah, that has the benefit of being financially independent. Yeah. But in the end, the downside, you don't have that much time as you would need to really push it forward. Yeah. And um, that is kind of a situation everyone can evaluate for for themselves mm. how much workload they they can they can do over over the week. Yeah. Um, for the example, the co-founder David, mm. he is working sixty percent, and another let's say sixty percent working on on Subgroup or yeah. Code. Yeah. 
and um, that gives us a kind of a, a salary in the beginning i uh, i even put some salary in into the company um, in order to to finance some projects and, yeah. and so on so this is also a benefit of being financially independent yeah. um, but at uh, uh, one day i think if if you really want to want to scale and be successful with the startup it's important to to make a clear cut so to go really all in with your time exactly um, yeah. that would be the point where you can finance your expenses in some other way either through a paying client or through an investor exactly. right exactly okay. all right well we can go off to the next topic um, we have six more left mm -hmm. which one would you like to talk about I'm curious to see what's behind uncertainty. Uncertainty. We have a lot of vague or more fuzzy subjects. Motivation, uncertainty. I think these are very important. How did you deal with uncertainty and the risk you were facing when you started this and also now? Because it, it is a lot of uncertainty. You don't know really, will you get that first paying customer or not? How do you deal with that? What do you tell yourself that helps you? you know, continuing on this uncertain path. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, as an entrepreneur, you're on the one side a little bit a risk taker. Yeah. So that's one thing. And the other thing, you need to be positive. Yeah. Um, and to, to tell you, okay, everything will be fine. Uh, you will one day get your, get your customer that keeps you going yeah. even if it's it's quite uncertain yeah um, speaking and learning from from other people mm -hmm. like within your network with potential clients um, who confirm that you're on the right track yeah that your idea is a good one yeah. and um, one day if you're advanced they they kind of will definitely use it or yeah. just to to get feedback get out get uh, learn from others um, that helps to, to kind of deal with that uncertainty you are facing. Yeah. And to know that, that others in the same situation, um, how, how they um, manage to, to do that, to get forward yeah. and so on. Yeah. How do you deal with, that's not a question here, how do you deal with the thought that possibly this might not work? I mean, we all hear the numbers, you know, 90% of the startups don't make it. How do you deal with that? You know, have you um, visualized that outcome, you know, that it's, it won't work? And how do you think you, you'll deal with that? I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, um, it's some time that you, that you put in there yeah. and some money, but... I am convinced that this is a, a really good learning yeah. in, in all the uh, different topics, be it financing, be it networking and sales yeah. or even leadership if, that you are building a team. Yeah. You, you really have your, in the end, your, your own company and yeah. your, all those, those topics you need to advance, to learn and, and um, to practice. Mm. And this is something where I would say, um, even though we're failing in the end, uh, it was totally worth the yeah. effort. Yeah. yeah. So would you say failing with the startup is not really failing? No, absolutely Because not. you learn a whole ton of different skills and, and you get to know so many people. Absolutely. So Th yeah. think, for example, for a typical corporate or, or consultant career mm -hmm. um, in the beginning you don't have responsibilities yeah uh, you're just executing a job um, you can they they like your your own initiative and, and this is something great you can learn from from experienced mm -hmm. managers and, yeah. and professionals that's that's also a very strong part but as an entrepreneur you you really responsible for for a whole lot more than uh, than your just your daily job and yeah. I think that's that's something um, no other job can give you yeah I totally agree with you on that point um, how if let's say I'm a I'm a person who has an idea or 
or who has no idea but wants to start something on my own, how can I reduce the risk that it's going to fail? Because a lot of people face this wall, kind of invisible wall, that it's it's way too uncertain to start something new and somebody else is going to do it anyway. How would you, or what tip would you give a new entrepreneur? That's probably the moment where I should drop the buzzwords like lean startup and, and design thinking. But <laughs> in, in the end, no matter how you call it, yeah. it's it's just, okay, you, you try to visualize your ID, try to, to get out as soon as possible with your ID and talk to potential customers yeah. and especially strangers, not to your family. Exactly. Um, <laughs> talk to they strangers. will always tell you it's, it's perfect. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and really ask them for, for their honest feedback, ask them if they would, would use it, if they would, would pay for it. And um, yeah, tr really try to, in the beginning, um, find, find the right path um, to, to move on and, and to proceed with the, the product and, and stuff. Yeah. I think this also answers my next question. How can I be sure that there is a demand for my offer? I think you also answered that with, with your answer. Just talk to people. Talk to people. There are kind of stuff like mock sales where you build a landing page yeah. and get like fake uh, sales or yeah. signups. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of, of other prototyping tools you can, you can use in the very beginning with very low effort yeah. um, in order to see if you really attract uh, yeah. the market. Yeah. So the goal is really to test, test as much as you can at the beginning, either through direct conversation or really through tools like like you mentioned to see if people would sign up or or you know fake buy your your product or whatever it is yeah all right so we could go to the next topic there's only five left yeah which is the next one that would interest you how about the first steps the first steps yes those are so the, let's do it chron chronological. Those are the toughest. What were the first steps that you took after having the idea of Conode or of this productivity um, app? At that point, there are, I would say, two important steps I took. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first one I mentioned before is talking to potential clients mm -hmm. to really get out doing some mock-ups, um, trying to, to visualize our ID and get out, get feedback. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing. And um, from previous experience, I knew that I will not be able to do that by myself. Mm -hmm. I needed a technical co-founder. Yeah. And so basically I was reaching out to the network. There are uh, very good events here in Zurich, for example, um, where you can uh, find or search for a technical co-founder yeah. especially That's true. and um, then I was really lucky to find David and um, ever since we are um, happily engaged with with Conode yes because it is like a marriage it is <laughs> they <definitely. say laughs> everywhere you can you can you can hear that what triggered you to start to say okay I'm going for this idea I'm going to get a co-founder I'm I'm going to talk to people about this idea it was in the in the beginning my own motivation to to do something to to really change something mm -hmm. to to close the gap that i've seen in the market yeah and um especially yeah i also got motivated by by the whole environment of the uh, that was back when i was uh, at the university mm -hmm. in st gallen the yeah. whole environment there yeah. um the lessons about entrepreneurship yeah. um, that really motivated me to not only think of filling the gap but to actually, actually do that. start doing yeah. something. Yeah. How many times did you pivot? You talked about your pivots shortly. Mm -hmm. You mentioned them, uh, and do you have an example of how you pivoted? Or I might think of two. Important pivots. 
So a pivot for for p- viewers who who don't understand the terminology, mm-hmm. um, maybe you want to explain what it is. In in a nutshell, uh, pivot is to to change the strategy, t- change the focus yeah. from what you're currently focusing on to something else. Yeah, a couple of. Uh, specialities there but um, one specific pivot i can think of is was on the product side yeah actually it was not our idea to to integrate all those tools from the beginning yeah it was more to kind of cover cover a lot of features natively by ourselves yeah and then try to to sync that with some existing environment yeah um Right now, as I told you before, we are more on a layer on top yeah. of all those tools. And here I would say we, we did a pivot on the, on the product. Yeah. The other thing was we pivoted in terms of our target clients. Okay. Um, we saw, for example, individual users, private users in, in the field of um, freelancing um, who had a lot of small projects yeah. going on yeah. um, so a very broad market that you can reach through social media for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, one day we, we we decided okay that might not be the most attractive mark there yeah so we needed to pivot and, and really focus on business clients yeah and since then we are more in the direct sales yeah. strategy more um, cold calling or emails yeah. and um, trying to to get our first company to to sign up and pay yeah i think that's super interesting to see that the first idea is not necessarily what you will end up with you will most probably most it's probably <laughs> exactly right you will most probably pivot and you had you know those are two of the more important pivots i'm sure you made a lot of small ones and adaptions and i think that's really important to understand that it's not the first idea that's gonna be the one that succeeds but it's really a journey and talking to customers you learn so much that you really will adapt your product to what the customer actually wants yeah i think that's super interesting how close are you to your original problem that you wanted to solve? That's a tough question. Um, I think we are on, on the on track mm-hmm. to, to really get there, to cover all use cases with one tool. Yeah. That's the initial um, vision. Yeah. But the, the product is not um, fully developed yet. Yeah. So I think we are on track. It will take maybe one one more year. Yeah. To to get there, um, but I would say the vision is is still in line or yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, but the way to get there, it uh, it changed over. Of time. course, yeah. it changed over time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We would have the next topic. For you to choose, we had we had uh, before the start. I mean, chronolog- chronologically, we would have the start, the idea. Oh no, before the start, we had this. It the first steps. steps. So you choose. Uh, let's go with before the start. Before the start. So the first question is, who were you before you started your business? I mean, we talked about this in the introduction a bit. Um, you were at the University of, of St. Gallen and what kind of person were you were you then? Would you say you changed a lot mm-hmm. with this experience? Um, yeah, tell us a bit more about that. Um, yeah, back then I actually did, I, uh, left that out before. Be, between the bachelor and the master, I did an apprenticeship at, as a polymechanic. Yeah. So I was more focused on technical or engineering, yeah. and um, I was working even in during the master studies at ABB yeah. in, in a project team for lean management. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I would say I was more an, an introvert. Mm-hmm. So 
more um, working in that team, but but trying to optimize for myself the the whole product line there, and um, had some small responsibilities for for projects. Yeah. Um, but being an entrepreneur requires to really be more outgoing, yes. open to network, and um, I think the during the studies I learned that mm -hmm. <clears throat> to um, be in on networking events, pre doing presentations, mm -hmm. and all that stuff people usually don't like to do. Yeah, and um, I think that also um, something that changed. I changed personally in in this regard yeah. because as an entrepreneur you definitely need to do that you yeah. need to go out do the pitches in front of a couple of hundred people yeah um, and that's and to to bring out the good message and yeah I, I would say this is something I haven't done before and um, I'm doing way better today yeah yeah of course I mean you you have a vision and your job is to convince other people that you don't know to follow your vision, basically. So that is a very, a very tough job, I imagine. Yeah. Um, what would you tell someone who is an introvert and who is not studying at a university where he does a lot of presentation, he or she doesn't do a lot of presentation? How would you, you know, what would you tell that person to do as a first step? And, and get to know that environment. I think there are always opportunities to, for example, do a presentation. Yeah. Um, try to get somehow exposed. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, a specific responsibility at a student organization. That's, for example, something. Or in a sports club where you need to be... Um, responsible for for the general assembly or yeah. or whatever. So try to to really get out, get out of the building, yeah. and um, talk to people and get into situations where you more or less don't feel comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, there are always, uh, I would say, opportunities to do that, even though the university or maybe your current employer. Um, doesn't provide such opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, I also agree with you. I, I have the same situation. I'm mm -hmm. more of a, you know, or I was more of the quiet guy in, in the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I think it's a practice thing, really. You, you get out, out of your comfort zone, as you said. You do one little presentation, then you do the next. And you get comfortable with this, with this situation. You get better at it. And then it really helps you share that message and that vision that you want people to follow. Let's say five years ago, I heard all that talk, like get out and, yeah. and do that stuff. And I said, okay, so not working for me, but actually it did. So yeah. <laughs> I went out and um, now I'm feeling quite more comfortable yeah. than before doing yeah. such stuff. That's great. All right. So we're down to three topics. The start, the idea, or newbie. Let's go with the start. The start. All right. The first question is, did you ever ask yourself, am I the one who should execute this idea? Others have more experience in that field. Why will I succeed? That's maybe going back a little to the optimistic character. Yeah. Um, I don't, I try not to think too much about that yeah especially uh, we are uh, doing a productivity cloud SaaS in switzerland yeah that's uh, maybe an insane idea i don't know um, why you should maybe go to silicon valley for, oh, yes. for a better um, ecosystem developers funding and so on yes um, and it's probably the same same with that question yeah so try and, and try not to to think too much about that I think with the team we have the expertise um, lean management as a background it's yeah. all about optimization um, but I don't there are I think entrepreneurs with a lot of more experience and um, so there's a good fit I would say but I'm probably not 
the only one who who could do that yeah yeah so it's this really this this mindset this positive mindset yeah. that well first okay it, it might work I, you haven't found exactly that solution yet on the market yeah. because you have most probably done your research and then on the other side also the mindset that if you fail or if the startup fails you as a person have not failed because you have learned so much doing it exactly okay i think that's a very good mindset to have <laughs> if you want to build your own company that's an advice for for everyone probably not only for yeah i think so yeah i think so too just see it this way if you learn something you've succeeded yeah. even if the project or whatever didn't succeed totally yeah so we're down to two the idea or newbie let's not do the newbie last so let's go with that <laughs> poor newbie <laughs> So did you experience moments where you thought you aren't an expert in a certain field? And how did you deal with that? How did you gather the knowledge? There are uh, a lot of fields, I would say, where I'm not an expert, mm -hmm. especially if you graduate from, from uh, university. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You're not really an expert. Yeah. Um, try again, try to find a mentor. Maybe there yeah. are a lot of experienced entrepreneurs who like to share their experience yeah there are programs accelerator incubator programs um, that that really help with such um, with struggles they they get on board the right people yeah um, the network is always important yeah. try to find really the people that that can help you in that situation yeah bring them on board as uh, as a team member yeah. or as a mentor or um, yeah that's uh, or even watch YouTube videos or do yeah. online research I think there are also very good online sources definitely where you can learn from yeah yeah I mean they say you're the average of the five people you surround yourself mm -hmm. with the most um, so I totally agree, you know, either getting a mentor or even talking just to people in events. As you said, there's a lot of events in Zurich. Just you don't need to have a mentor directly. You can just talk to people who have had different experiences and actually just ask for help. Totally. Just yeah. Asking yeah. Is, <laughs> is the first step to receiving help and feedback. I think that's, that's a very cool thing about the startup atmosphere and, and environment everyone is willing to help and share their experience yeah yep. yeah that's really cool everyone wants to help to help out i think so all right so the last one is the idea how did you find the idea or the problem you wanted to solve you talked a little bit about this um, you talked about the problem that mm -hmm. you wanted to be to get stuff done better and did you have many different ideas? And if yes, how did you choose, you know, the direction that you wanted to take with this idea? Um, I had a, a lot of ideas, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, back then, even even tried a couple of before or as a side project yeah. while working on, on Conode. Yeah. Um, but the the idea behind Conode was really the one I, I experienced myself as a as a pain point in my life. Yeah. Um, and I figured it gets trickier the more I'm moving from university or trans uh, doing the transition from university to my work life. Yeah. It's getting getting more complex and complicated. Yeah. And um, yeah, basically that was that idea was based on, on my own needs yeah and as I figured out really quickly based on the needs of a lot of others yeah it it happens a lot that entrepreneurs start with a pain that they experience themselves because basically you're the first customer and you can understand the first customer very well because mm -hmm. it's yourself and you can already get a a really rough idea of what the problem really is and so on and then you can talk to yeah you can start with family members and 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 other people and see if they also have the problem or not yeah definitely yeah yeah 
All right, so we've uh, gone through the topics. I have one last question for you. Who do you think should build a business of their own? You know, what kind of person or, you know, who, do you, who would you recommend this to? And why would you recommend it? Maybe I, I go the other way around. I would recommend it to really everyone. Yeah. Because of the, the learning curve, even though you're struggling, you learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's great experience. I I realized over the last couple of years that even companies, um, they really appreciate such um, experiences. Yeah. So before it was more, okay, the, the failure culture was kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. I experienced the opposite so far even in Switzerland even in Switzerland yeah um, that that they really appreciate such um, experience and, and um, especially such motivation to to do something entrepreneurial yeah um, to what kind of person was the, the first question yeah um, I think you know you need to be optimistic positive to really uh, sit sit down or sit out all those the struggles yeah um, to to motivate yourself you need to be a little bit a risk taker yeah um, if you're all in uh, for example that's that's uh, what you need to be uh, because there is <laughs> that's fine uh, yeah for for those who um, who should who should start a startup yeah it's like the ones who who are willing to take a little bit of a risk yeah and um, basically yeah who who's who's positive minded yeah. and um, really gets things done that's that's also also something else I would say yeah to to really have the, the get shit done um, yeah motivation and the vision because there's a lot to do. Yeah, exactly. In different exactly. areas, exactly. <laughs> there's always work to do. Exactly. I know you. You told me you've been working today. It's Saturday. Uh, you've been working on your startup. Uh, you've had a full week of f the full-time job, yeah. and now Saturday you've been working until 5 p.m. So, uh, I mean, you're the best example of what you just said. You just have to put in the time as well if you really want to fulfill that that dream and that vision you have. All right, I have another question um, regarding the learnings of your experience uh, during um, this path of entre entrepreneurship. What would you say what was your biggest learning of, of yeah, these last one and a half years? From today's view, I would have been more structured in the beginning. Yeah. I have the feeling, looking from today's perspective, that we lost maybe some time in the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah. shaping, shaping our product, doing those, those little pivots, trying to, to really improve and, and get out. Yeah. And I would do that in a more structured way to yeah. gather faster feedback, yeah. um, maybe more little rapid prototyping typing stuff yeah. and so on and um, this is this is something i would do differently today okay why do you think you or it, why do you think it took you that time at the beginning and why do you think you didn't do it that's uh, structured in the beginning it was not only a learning curve for, for the company but also for for myself mm -hmm. um, you need to get familiar with the with the methodologies. Um, yeah. You're trying to um, learn more. You you're starting to read about methodologies. Yeah. You learn that in at university. Um, t applying all that also takes yeah. takes some time and, and learning effort. Yeah. And um, that's that's something I learned and would do that differently. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Okay. What do you think would, would help you in, you know, or would help any beginning entrepreneur 
that still has to learn these methodologies and you know how you know this structured way what do you think would help someone like that um, I learned a lot at the university yeah. about that, especially what kind of methods there are and so on. Yeah. Um, but today there are a lot of entrepreneurs who share their experience. Yeah. There are even the, the fuck-up nights here in, yes. in Zurich, I've heard of for those. example, yes. Yes. Um, where f founders who struggled in the end um, are sharing their, their problems mm -hmm. and... Um, these, there are a lot of, of other, I would say, sources where you can, you can gather knowledge and really avoid maybe, maybe some of those traps or um, stuff in the beginning. Yeah. One addition to that, you need to, to really convince about your idea and, yeah. and really uh, you need to like working for that idea. Yeah. Otherwise, and look outside, it's, it's sunny. Uh, otherwise, you would prefer to go uh, for a swim or a run or what else. Exactly. Yeah. It's amazing weather outside and I don't want to keep you any longer. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and experience with us. I'm sure our viewers will love it. And I wish you all the best for Konot in the future. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you.